tiny one. So good, man. This is everything you need to know about the wacky rig. You start it off with your rod and reel. You're going to want a spinning reel, something like that. Your rod, you're going to want something a little bit longer, a little bit softer. This is a 7.2 medium heavy carbon fiber rod. Um, it's not that deep. You don't need to go buy a new rod if you don't have one that's like this. But um, if you have more money to spend, the better it'll be, the more you'll enjoy it. The more you'll enjoy it. No, probably not. All right, for your line, you're gonna need two things. You're gonna need some high visibility, 20 pound braid, and then you're gonna need some fluorocarbon or mono, that is 20 pounds. It doesn't really matter which brand. Fluorocarbon's a little bit better, more expensive, but if you can handle it, you can handle it. We're gonna explain the reason for needing two in just a second. As far as the baits you're gonna be throwing, you're gonna want Senkos, Dingers, stick baits, anything like that. And what you, what you really wanna pay attention to is a high concentration of salt. What that'll do is it'll give you a bit more of a stable and faster uh, rate of fall whenever you throw it in the water. I don't recommend doing any sort of modifications or weird hooks into them. Um, I don't even recommend using the O-rings. I've used them before. They don't really help too much for me personally. Um, I think they're kind of a scam a little bit because, I mean, these things are cheap. You know, O-rings, they're decently expensive. They cost, in my experience, just, just as much as a bag of plastics to buy a bag of O-rings. So I don't recommend getting them. It's your choice. Use your money how you want to use it but I haven't noticed a difference with O-rings protecting my baits at all. And if you know what you're doing, you can avoid ripping your bait and spending that extra money. I just used what I use for a Texas rig. This is gonna be your two to three aught Texas rig hook. If you wanna go a little bit bigger, I recommend getting a two to three aught. This is bigger than two to three aught, so just keep that in mind. But this kind of shape of hook, two to three aught, should be fine, working perfectly. I don't recommend using circle hooks just cause, I mean, there's no reason um, to do it, it's just limiting yourself on your hook set chance to hook up and I mean you don't do it with a Ned rig, you don't put a circle hook on there and you don't do it with any other bait really so besides baiting so I don't see the reason in changing it up for a wacky rig. You're going to want to have the braid on there first wrapped around your whole spool of line on your reel so this is going to be a high vis, just remember that. Then you're going to take your fluorocarbon mono, whatever you have and you're going to take around about a foot and a half, about that much, you know. Not too much. Whenever you tie this on to your braid, you're going to have a, a length of a length of line where the fish won't be able to see the line connected to the braid and to your rod. So that's going to help you kind of stay undercover and a little bit low key. And that's also what helps and makes you uh, available to use high visibility braid so that whenever I cast it out there I'm not even gonna have to feel the line if the fish is on it I'm just gonna sit here with my rod slack let it fall and I'm just gonna be watching that high visibility braid so that if I see it moves I can just set the hook without even feeling it because I know he's on it I'm seeing the high visibility braid rather than trying to keep just enough attention on it to keep tension on it as it's slowly floating and trying to do that a hundred times in a day or a hundred times in an hour you know it's not it's just not repeatable. It's not a repeatable action, so we're going to take away that that factor in fishing wacky rig and we're just going to make it all simple, a lot more easier. You're going to want to go on the, where it's flat right here, I recommend starting on the flat side that's closer to the middle and you're not going to do anything special with it. You're just going to go straight from the bottom and just straight through the top. You're not going to go through the side, anything like that. You're just going to go straight through the bottom, straight through the top. See how I just went bottom to top. And that flat side right there, you want to go on the side closer to the middle. And then as you kind of use your bait more and more, you want to get through there soft. If that means, you know, shave down these back hooks, I'm fine with it, but you might want to miss more fish. As you kind of, your bait gets a little bit more tore up, you just want to find new spots to put your hook doing the same way straight from the bottom through the top. Um, try and keep it in the middle as much as possible. Rotate the bait so that um, you're not going through the same hole every time. So let's say I'm here, this is the bottom. The next time I might turn it like this and then go from the bottom again like that. So you just gotta find ways to keep it alive. Once you set all this up, you're really just gonna keep it simple. You're not gonna do anything different than I normally would fishing a wacky rig. You're just gonna flick it out there, make a soft landing. Although sometimes what I like to do if it's if there's a tree that I'm casting to, what I'll do is I'll get a little bit of an angle up on it. 
so that way it splashes down and creates a big motion in the water. And so I know for sure the fish have seen it, heard it, and I know it looks like a worm, uh, any sort of bugs, and like this, that just fell out of the tree and all these bass are gonna be going for that. So now whenever I cast it out there, I'm just gonna normal flip it. I'm just gonna let it keep the slack in the line. And you see how the line, I can see it on top of the water. Um, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sit here and get tension all the way to where I have about three feet of line sitting on top of the water because that braid floats. And now I'm just gonna sit here and watch it. And whenever that fish hits, I'm just gonna see the end of that line go down to the left, to the right, go up. And I'm just gonna sit here, get as close to the slack as I can without touching it, and just set that light on. So I mean, it's, it's really just that simple. It's just keep uh, fishing in a wacky rig the same way. You flip it out there, and then you just let it sink all the way down, pretty much to the bottom. If you got grass on the bottom, try and keep it above a foot on the grass, and then you're gonna, I like to give it two to three pops up back to the top of the water. And what's even nice about it is that whenever I'm popping it up, I'll actually see the transition from the braid to the fluorocarbon. I'll see that little knot hit the top of the water, and I know that that bait is about a foot below the surface of the water, which is perfect right where you want it whenever you're popping it back up. The Wacky Rig can also just be a complete game changer whenever you use it as a following, uh, as a follow-up shot. If you tie on something like a big swim bait, big jig, and you have a bass that comes in and tries to bite it and misses, you can follow it up with the Wacky Rig, and that's just something perfect that's going to entice them. You throw it right on top of them, you know where they are. It's going to slow fall right in front of them, make them mad, and they're going to be for sure by them. I have a video of this working on a good sized bass, and so it's just a complete game changer is being able to use it as a follow up shot whenever you know where those bass are because this is a target heavy um, bait. You're not going to cover a lot of water, you're going to have to know where the fish are or get on top of them. And so once you use this as a, as a follow up, you know where they are, you'll be able to get them easy. The follow up shot is how you do it. You get that attraction bait, that big swim bait on there, and then if they miss it, you hit them with the slow fall and bang they can't resist. That was perfect. I think there's probably three to four main colors that you should be using. Number one, we're going to say this color, this is just deep blue, maybe a little bit purple, um, with shiny blue flake in it. Um, I can see what it's called. This is the Junebug Dinger, so that's a version of it. I know uh, Senko has another one that's pretty much the same thing. It's just, I think it might be just purple with blue flake is what it's called or something like that. I'll definitely put a link in the description and all that. Um, so I think you either go some sort of black and blue, purple and blue, some dark color and a blue, or you keep it simple, you keep it natural, you go green pumpkin, dark green, um, maybe, a green with a little bit of red flake and the reason I go with the dark color instead of natural is because you're going to be throwing this thing in shade. You're not, it's not an open water bait. Okay, I'm throwing it under trees, I'm throwing it in docks, I'm throwing it somewhere where a bait, a bug, a worm could fall off a tree, fall off a dock into the water and that's in dark places. And so what I'm trying to do, is I'm trying to create a silhouette in that dark of what the fish are looking for. And then finally as size length goes, Keep it four to five. Anything under three or under four is just not good. I mean, you're not gonna catch big fish on it. You know, it might be fun to catch smaller fish. Do what you like. But even even the small fish will bite at a four inch worm, five inch worm. Um, I've caught plenty of small ones on it, and it'll let you have the availability to go high rather than just keeping it low like that. 